Hey folks, this is Bob coming at you from Fireman Outdoors. Today we're taking a look at the Sig Sauer M11A1. Stay tuned. Today we are taking a look at the Sig Sauer M11A1. This particular weapon came to me used in a trade. It is clear, nothing in it. When I first heard about the M11A1, I really didn't know anything about them. I didn't know what the M11 was. After a little bit of research and uh, trying to decide if this is something that I really wanted to have, you know, the M11 was a, a duty weapon that they used uh, for the uh, the naval flight guys. Something nice and compact that they could have on them in case uh, they found themselves in a situation where they needed to, uh, to fight back with a little bit of something. Great weapon. It's got a nitron coating on it. Uh, it's got a, uh, an all-metal frame, stainless slide. Uh, you can see the grips on this particular model, or not the grips that came with it. These are some uh, grips off an Elite model. Comes with grips on it that are that say P228 on it. There's a bit of controversy on that, whether this is a P228 or a P229. Has a lot more in common with the P229, but for all intents and purposes, I'm just gonna call this what it is, the M11A1. It's a nine millimeter. Standard capacity on the magazines is 15, plus one in the chamber. For a compact model, packs quite a bit of firepower. As you can see, it's got a pretty wide grip on it. That's to accommodate for the double stack magazines. As with uh, most double action, single action type SIGs, uh, you have the decocker, you have the slide release, you have the takedown mechanism. This particular model comes with SIG night sights on it. The ergonomics on this particular piece, pretty nice. The balance on this particular weapon is by far above what a lot of other pistols offers. Uh, with a regular 226 or say like my Mark 25, you've got the longer barrel on it and you've got the rail. Adds a little bit more dip to the front of the barrel. You feel that extra weight in there. It's not a significant amount of weight, but it's enough to where you actually notice it when you actually fire this particular pistol. There we have it. SIG M11A1. It's kind of a rainy, crappy day. Right now we're in between rain showers. We're going to go up and we're going to shoot this. Stay tuned at the end for my final thoughts. Targets. Uh, some of my thoughts already on this particular piece is uh, it hasn't been quite as reliable as what I've seen with a lot of other 
uh, SIG pistols. I have had uh, one failure to extract on a uh, on a round that had been fired. Uh, I know that there's been a little bit of a controversy on whether it should have a, a smaller extractor instead of the large one that's on it. Uh, I have been running a lot of different magazines on this today. I've been running 226 mags. I've been running the uh, 229 magazines. Uh, I've been running phosphate coated magazines. I've been running glossy magazines. I've been running some Metgar magazines. And today I didn't bring anything to mark my mags to find out if I can try to uh, figure out what the problem is. All in all, pretty pleased. Before I give a definitive answer on whether you should go out and buy one of these or not, I really need to find out what the issue is and why it was not holding back. I also need to find out why uh, I did have one round today that did not extract. Uh, to me, that was a little bit troublesome. But I'm using bulk pack ammo. I'm using the cheapest stuff I can find. Uh, you know, it's your Winchester white box from Walmart. So that could be part of the issue. That said, it's a great pistol. If you like SIGs, you're looking for something that's a little bit more compact than a 226. I think this is a good route to go. Uh, for me, you know, I had 226 magazines that I can use in this. You know, I'm very familiar with the, uh, the 226 line or any of the P lines for that matter. So for me, it made a lot of sense to go ahead and try to find one of these to, to shoot. Whether or not I keep this in the long run, I do not know. I have no intention of getting rid of this. But you've probably heard it before, you know, like, oh, it's my favorite pistol in the world. I'll never get rid of it. A year later, it loses its, you know, appeal, end up trading it for something else. But anyway, that's a look at it. It's a very fine weapon if you're looking for something new, if you're looking for something a little bit more compact. Thanks for watching. And uh, thank you to uh, the fine folks over at Rokon Nation. Today's episode is going to be uh, edited on... Final Cut Pro, which is courtesy of them. Anyway, thanks for watching. All your controls on the side, if you're familiar with Sig Zowers and their double action, single, single action pistols, is going to be exactly identical. So rack it back, flip your lever down, and it's hard to do in reverse, I'm not even going to try.